This is the second video by best-selling author Rinker Buck. In this video, we're going to learn how you harness a mule to a wagon. Okay, so what we're going to do today is just give you a little tutorial on uh, what the harness is and how the harness goes on, and I'll put it on for you, and it'll be a fun thing for you. This is my mule Boots. She's uh, uh, a molly mule out of a uh, walking horse in Alabama and a mammoth jack and about 15 hands, a little smaller than the old big draft mules I've, I've been using because I like a smaller mule now. And uh, w normally we drive her in a team, but her teammate is... Uh, uh, just developed a little bit of a limp after hitting a telephone pole the other day, long story. And so I like to keep them both driving single anyway. It's good to keep them in the habit of driving signal, single. So we're going to put the harness on, and I'll explain the parts of the harness, and we'll go from there. So this harness here, it's an old, old style leather harness. I actually had it built, but it's an old style leather harness. Uh, if you saw the harness, except for maybe the collar, Going back as far back as the 17th or 18th century, they look almost identical to this, and I'll explain all the parts as we go on. We start by putting the bridle on. You do everything from the left-hand side. It's all designed for that. You start by putting the bridle on, and notice the, the blinders on this bridle, and the blinders don't just keep their head focused. With their re vision restricted, the pulling animal, the mule, is forced. Uh, to listen to you for commands. It focuses their attention more on your voice and that's good because they understand your commands and you talk to them a certain way. And because it's a mule collar it has what they call bat wing or sometimes also called pigeon wing uh, shape. On a, on a regular horse you're just going to see a little square pad here but on this because the mules have peripheral vision that goes all the way back to their tail and that's why they're so sure-footed because they can see their feet you, you make it out of a bat wing or a pigeon wing like this uh, so that more of their vision is restricted. And uh, in the morning you get up, if you're going to use the mule it's kind of convenient to just harness them up early in the day and have her all ready to go. First thing you do is put the bridle on. And this is the bit that goes in their mouth like that. And you get their ears underneath, and you can see this is a really good, sweet, gentle mule. Three years old, and she's dead broke already because I had the Amish do all the work on her. And this is just what's called the throat latch. It doesn't have to be even that tight. It just uh, keeps the bridle from going off if anything goes on. The next thing we do is we put on the collar. There's several different kinds of collars out there. I'm trying to get a, a, new, a new collar set up because it's called a brawler actually. But the, uh, the point here is uh, this is actually more of a work collar for pulling heavier loads, but a lot of people do their driving with the bigger, heavier work collar. It's leather, stuffed with straw or corn straw, and it pulls against the horse and gives you most of your power. And you come over like this. There's a pad underneath. So you gotta reach that through. Then you hook it up this way. When it's done, put the pad on, and now your collar is on, and that's the major uh, pulling surface uh, for the animal. Now you have the rest of the harness, and I'll explain it to you as it all goes on. This is the back. This is the middle. These are called the hames. I should know the derivation of the word hames, but as you can see, the hames are 
fit right into that groove in the collar and when the horse, when the mule pulls, goes that way, that stays tight there. And you put this piece on here, which is called the hame strap. And that gets tightened up pretty firm. Because that's your, your major pulling area. And you kind of check which hole you used when you put it on because you want it to be the same way it normally is. Okay, this thing here is called the saddle. <clears throat> and first thing you do before you tighten up the saddle is these are your driving reins on a team wagon. These are called lines. There's a reason for that because the lines could go among many horses. But if it's just a single horse, you call them reins. <clears throat> now you hook up the saddle, and what the deal here is is this is what keeps the central part, the central part of the harness in the middle. It's all tied together by one last step, which we'll go over in a minute. That's what's called the shaft keeper. The shafts on the wagon, which you're going to see in a minute. The shafts go in there. Everything's all tied together by this check line, which comes from the bridle. It keeps the mule from running away on you or anything like that because they can never really get their head down. But also, as the mule pulls, this keeps like that and it keeps the harness all centered. Back here, you have one last thing that you hook up when you harness. Hoo boots. This is called the, the hoo, hoo boots. This is called the crupper or the crouper. Final piece of harness that keeps everything all together in one line. You can, we hook up the other rein in the back. And you're pretty much all set to go at this point. And what happens next is I've got boots tied to the hitching post here just because, you know, the Amish will hook them up loose and everything like that. But I like to get over. Come here, boots. Over. Over. Hoo, hoo. Uh, I like to leave her hooked up to the hitching post while I hook her up so that there's less of a temptation, less of an ability of her to uh, run away on me. Hoo. What I was doing there that you didn't quite see is you put the shaft in the shaft keeper, just like I mentioned before. You get your lines all ready. These are your driving lines. Check that they're connected properly. Get them in the wagon. Just because if the animal tries to run away or something, you grab the lines. These are the traces. This is called a trace. I guess it has some 
18th century derivation in the English language, meaning the path or the root or the whatever. You hook the trace to something called the tree, a single tree. And the way the single tree works is as the mule pulls and the mule goes like this, the mule's going like this, this goes back and forth. But it's all pivoted on this one center connection here, this big C-clamp type device that's hooked to the shafts. And so it always, when the horse is going like this, this rotates and therefore <clears throat> uh, you're always pulling to the center. These here are called the backing straps, sometimes known as holdback straps. And what they do is, if you're going down a hill and you need to pull the animal back to hold the wagon back, then instead of pulling through this assembly, they're holding back through this assembly. And this is called the breaching, the breaching. The breaching is connected with the holdback straps to the shafts, and you'll see when we drive, I can pull her back and she keeps the wagon nice and slow. Go over to the other side. And we're gonna repeat the same steps. Take the trace, hook it to the tree. There's a little snap device there that keeps it on. Hook it to the tree. Hook your hold back straps to the breaching and we're ready to go. And what I do now in this situation is just take one more good look through everything to make sure that uh, I have hooked the horse up right and uh, that I didn't make any mistakes. The mule, hook the mule up right and you're ready to go. And on a hot day, you kind of appreciate modern innovation and you know modern change because on a hot day after you've gone through all that with two horses sometimes I drive a three horse hitch uh, you're sweating you have a lot of perspiration on your back it's just a lot of work uh, but it might take me 10 minutes to get the horse hooked up it takes the Amish boys about three minutes so it's just what you're used to so I think we're I think we're all set Danny <laughs>